All right, so I'm going to call to order the regular council meeting here on Tuesday, August 2nd, uh, 6.30 p.m., taking place at the W.C. O'Neill Arena Complex at 24 Reed Avenue. Uh, as always, we are in person, but also uh, on Zoom, as well as airing through our social media at Town of St. Andrews on Facebook. Uh, and uh, I just wanted to say how good it is to continue to have all of council gather. It's been a it's been a, now it feels more normal like when we first got together. So at this time, I'm going to get into the recording of attendance. I note that all members of council are in attendance with exception of Councillor Gumashell. I believe it's 1 a.m. where he is right now. So I think you still should have had to call in and spend a few hours with us, but we'll let it go. And uh, first of all, I wanted to recognize that we are on the unceded traditional territory of the Pesco Tumogadi people. I'll be looking for a mover to approve the agenda as circulated. I've got Councillor Heenan, a seconder is Deputy Mayor Akaji. I'll just note one little thing. We'll call it a friendly amendment. It does say that we're going to be going to second and third reading for bylaw 22-04, but in your package, you only see it for second reading. Uh, we're going to stick to the second reading simply for the fact that if we do both tonight, I'll have to read a seven-page bylaw versus by title. So we'll do that at the following meeting, and there's no real-time requirement on that other than it's something that we have to legally do anyway. Um, so any other discussion on the agenda? Okay, all in favor of approving this agenda, please signify by saying aye. aye. That is everybody, so the agenda has been approved. Uh, any disclosure of conflict of interest for this evening? Seeing none, if anything comes up throughout the course of the meeting, please let me know. Uh, we had uh, quite a few presentations our last meeting, so none this evening, but we will approve the minutes. Um, and before I get through them, you know, I like to do these as quick as possible. Is there anyone that has any changes they'd like to make to any of the minutes? All right, then I'm going to fly through them. So the first are the minutes of the 220704 public hearing of objections to amendment MP20-06 to the municipal plan MP20-01 and amendment Z22-02 to the zoning bylaw Z22-01, which was Monday, July 4th, 2022, 6.30 p.m. Could I have a mover to approve those minutes? I've got Councillor Heenan seconded by Councillor Hurdle. All in favor of approving those minutes, please signify by saying aye. aye. That's everybody. Those minutes have been uh, approved. The next one are the minutes of the 220704 public hearing of objections to amendment Z22-03 to the zoning bylaw Z22-01 on Monday, July 4th, 2022 at 6.45 p.m. Could I have a mover? Councillor Blanchard, a seconder, Deputy Mayor Akaji. All in favor of approving those minutes, please signify by saying aye. Everybody, those are approved. The next one are the minutes of the 220704 regular council meeting on Monday, July 4th, 2022 at 6.50 p.m. Could I have a mover for those minutes? I've got Councillor Heenan and seconded by Councillor Neal. All in favor of adopting those minutes, please signify by saying aye. aye. Perfect. And the last ones that we'll be doing for minutes this evening is the minutes of the 220718 regular council meeting on Monday, July 18th, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. Once again, looking for a mover. Deputy Mayor Akaji, seconded by Councillor Blanchard. All in favor of approving those minutes, please signify by saying aye. aye. That is everybody. And again, all the minutes have been adopted and approved. Thank you very much, Council. Um, communications, uh, we're jumping right ahead to the staff reports. Um, Mr. Spear was on vacation last week, so we understand that obviously we didn't get that in for this package. Um, is there anything that uh, Mr. Spear you'd like to highlight or just overall, uh, they're all included and closed within yeah. our packages? I just, Your Worship, just maybe one thing. Um, I, I'm sure by now most of the town has heard that we had the fire at the wharf a few weeks ago, which we were happy the fire department responded. But it should be noted that a couple of local citizens were happened to be down there and also um, participated in putting out the fire, at least addressing it before the fire department could get there. So I would like to, I think it was Alex Ross and um, Dan Brown that had gone down and uh, sort of addressed it, at least so it didn't get further ahead so I would like to thank them on behalf of the town for uh, looking after that I think as well uh, uh, there was a boat actually in the water as well and Dwayne Doucette was, uh, was throwing water on it too so yep. Yep. quick action could be the difference of that one and uh, uh, I, I don't know if there's is there an investigation going on around that or is it closed or is there any any it, speculation it, well, what would cause that the speculation was that there's somebody smoking and just butted out on it and I'll be honest I would have never thought in a million years these water soaked piles could catch fire but obviously they can so um, we're looking at even though it's supposed to be a non-smoking facility we may stick out some <laughs> ashtrays or you know what I mean to put out there just in case because there are people who will light up and can't uh, get them down 
Uh, there's other stuff there, worship and maybe next report. I would like to highlight some stuff for the public. Sure. And maybe for the next, the next meeting. Yeah, for the next yeah. meeting, just to, to, for all the work that's being done by the town so people can appreciate what is going on by staff. Perfect. Well, we certainly understand while you're on vacation that you shouldn't type up that four page report. Um, so, uh, understandable. Did uh, council have any questions on anything within the staff reports? No, so I will be looking at this point for someone to move to accept the staff reports and financial reports as presented in this uh, package. We've got Councillor Heenan seconded by Councillor Hurdle. All in favor of adopting these staff reports, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those have been accepted and we'll get kind of the, the sh I guess the shortened summary for public knowledge and, and everything on what's happening in the town for the next meeting. So at this point, we're gonna move to the introduction, consideration and passing of bylaws and motions. The first one, as always, will be kicked off with the talented Deputy Mayor, Kate Akaji under finance and administration. Oh, my microphone was on. Is my microphone off? Because the button was on. Sorry. Um, FA 220615, August 2nd, 2022. And it's paving the parking lot at Point Park at Prince of Wales and Water Street, updated quote. So the background is this. At the June 20th, 2022 regular council meeting, council supported a mo motion to pave the parking lot at the Point Park near the Van Horn Trail. Head for $12,000 plus, plus HST as part of increasing accessibility in this area. When staff approached the company to complete the paving work, it was noted that the price of asphalt had doubled Due to the increase, staff requested additional quotes from several paving companies in the area for the work. Provided with this report is a copy of the lowest bid quote to complete the work at $19,100 plus HST from Sewell's Paving. Staff are seeking approval of council for the additional funds to complete the paving work. Note that as stated on June 20th, all capital projects are under budget for 2022 and the additional 7,000 is within the capital budget for 2022. So the motion is this, <clears throat> that council approve the paving of the parking lot near the Van Horn Trail and at the Point Park at the corner of Prince of Wales and Water Street for a price of $19,000, $19,100 plus HST to Sewell's Paven, Paving. And I so move this, Your Worship. And could I have a seconder for that motion? I've got Councillor Heenan, and we're gonna be open up for discussion or debate. Any member of council? I've got a few. We'll start uh, with Councillor Hurdle. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I guess when, when uh, turning to third party vendors for uh, quotes, is there any provision to have a, a cost breakdown when we're asking for a quote or is it just essentially the lowest bidder that we accept? Well, typically we accept the lowest bidder in a small project like that. So what happened though is that on the contract that we'd quoted on originally, that's what happens is with these bigger tenders is they quote in every component of the project. And so when we came up with that original quote, we use what was the asphalt price on that, but th when we submitted it and asked for the extra work by the subcontractor, they said they couldn't do it anymore, that, that they had submitted that price back in March and the price of asphalt had more than doubled over that time and it you know, would have put them back. So for this, it's just bare bones asphalt that the grading work has pretty much already been done. We did a little bit of our own. And then the contractor that worked on Prince of Wales Street graded it for us. So pretty much it's just gonna be the asphalt and rolling for that area. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, this is gonna be a minor nickel and dime question, but leave it to a bank manager to ask mm -hmm. this question. I know in, in the report it says that $7,000 is within the capital budget, but that doesn't include tax, which would make it more than $8,000 if we include the tax in that. Is that still within the budget? Well, that's correct. That's about, a, uh, you have to add about 4.5% uh, on top of the final price to get our com final converted price. Thanks. Perfect. Deputy Mayor Akaji. Sorry, Your Worship. Um, <clears throat> do we get the HSD back, though? Uh, in municipal world, we get about 75% uh, of it back, more or less. It's like 74.63% or something, but it's about 75% of it back for most projects. Funny enough, the arena and the wharf get it all back. But 
I have okay. to talk to the finance minister to figure out why. My other thing doesn't have anything to do with this except for the place where it is referenced. Um, we keep calling it the point, and I know mayor and council have done that, but it is technically called Indian Point. And if you take the Indian out, I'm afraid that you're going, they're going to forget where it is. It is Indian Point. We haven't been able to change it as a municipality, as mayor and council. Um, we have to get all the people that um, are necessary in order to change this so that it becomes not a, what they call a derogatory term. But if you take the Indian out, I am afraid that you are not going to remember that we are on the Indigenous land. I know that we, the mayor, recognizes our territory, but um, if you forget them, we have been there, we are there now, and we will be there. Uh, whether you like it or not, we are going to live there as Indigenous people. And the Beskatomakati people are recognized. I would like it seen um, to be renamed as Passamaquoddy Park, but we can't do that till federal government, provincial government, municipal government, and the chief and tribes get together and make it so. But I think with our references, we need to continue to reference it as Indian, Indian Point, because that is what it's called. And I think uh, we need to continue to do that. So that's just my pet peeve of the day. Thank you very much. You no, I, I, I wouldn't even call it a pet peeve, Deputy Mayor Agaji. You're, you're certainly uh, well-spoken and, and in the right to say that. And I just to echo those comments, I, I welcome those conversations when the, when the timing's right for everybody because our, our door is open to, to make that change when the time comes. Um, so any other member of council? Okay, I will call the question then. All in favor of approving this motion, please signify by saying aye. That is everybody, so that has been approved. Um, we have nothing under public works, public safety, or business, tourism, heritage, and culture, but not to throw you in the spot council hurdle, but you're the next one up from it. So is there any way that you could do the recreation and community services? And I would say that there's a blank in that motion. Maybe put Mallory Sports Field just because that was the number one location. Of course, we can amend it uh, if we need to. Um, before you read that motion, I know uh, we're going to debate it, but maybe it would be good just uh, for Mr. Knopper to give us a brief summary of the open house. Uh, just for the public's knowledge as well as councils on, on what happened. Uh, they looked at two locations, but I'll pass it over to you, Mr. Knopper. Um, thank you, Your Worship. So we did have an open house on uh, July 25th. There was approximately 20 people that were here, and thank you, thank you to Councillor Neal for participating and, and being here in that. So there was uh, quite a discussion for about an hour and a half on the options for either the Queen Street extension or... Um, the Harry Mallory sports field. Um, there were multiple discussions and pros and cons on both. Uh, at the Queen Street extension, discussions were about uh, noise and how that would fit in with the residential area, that it is a smaller park zone. Um, although it is closer and easier walking, especially with sidewalks and being a flatter zone versus the Harry Mallory from being downtown. Uh, there, were, there were some concerns about loss of the natural habitat there uh, with the Harry Mallory, there was options for a larger park. Uh, there were some cons written concerns in about loss of trees. Uh, the dog park committee has said they would, they would like to see trees within both parks, which either option is is available. Um, there were concerns about distance away with the sports field uh, for regular users. Um, there was discussion about um, when you're talking tourists coming to the area that m most of them will travel to either park uh, location although one is closer uh, to one of the or one's closer to the Algonquin one's closer to the campgrounds but tourists will travel to either uh, but they, everybody was in favor of having a dog park they all saw the benefits to having one in the community in fact you've seen a couple of letters where people were asking for more I'll just note council that there is a large beach area when the water is receded where people can still take their pets uh, without being within town property so that's another where place for people to go uh, you'll see that in the breakdown of the report there was discussion on the design that the sh there should be some openness uh, and but there should also be some trees for dogs and some shade um, there were suggestions on how would this would be maintained in the winter time how would you know we deal with um, snow plowing or clearing so that access could still be available 
Um, but for the most part, I mean, it was uh, for a conclusionary thing. Uh, something else for council to consider is the costing of either park. Uh, again, Harry Mallory is looking at about 120000 versus the Queen, uh, Queen Street extension, about 60000 So uh, those are aspects to take into consideration. And so you can re read the final report that's there. But uh, I think you have a tough decision to make on a, on a location. But the dog park committee is willing to support you in either option they would like to start fundraising and, and getting a, a park going so you do have pros and cons to both but i'll leave it up to council for final choice perfect thank you and it sounds like a lot of that feedback is very consistent with some of the letters councils received and mr knobber sent those all to council so we've received that so at this time maybe we'll read the motion then open up for council for any questions so over to you uh councillor hurdle Thank you, Worship. I don't know if I can uh, fill the very well-worn and, and speedy sneakers of uh, Councillor Gumashill, but I'll do my best. Uh, this is in reference RSC 220610. Um, the, the subject is the off-leash dog park update for Council. Background is Council has been in cons consultation with the Dog Park Committee since June 6, 2022, regarding the potential uh, uh, of a new off-leash dog park in St. Andrews. The Council was presented with two options for locations, uh, Harry Mallory Sports Field and the Queen Street Extension. A mail-out was sent to 1,500 homes and businesses in St. Andrews uh, and surrounding area to attain feedback and to host an open uh, house for comments on July 25th, 2022. Please see the attached staff report for information on feedback collected. Uh, through all the consultation processes, an off-leash dog park was supported, but there, have been, uh, there has been all uh, debate on both locations identified with pros and cons. Based on the information collected, Council can make an educated decision on a proposed location of the park or table the decision on the location to further review the park locations. If a park location is selected, the Dog Park Committee and the Town can work together on developing the park. The Dog Park Committee itself is committed to fundraising at least 50% of the funds for the park. The park construction will not commence until a minimum of 50% of funds uh, are raised. Working with the town with a memorandum of understanding on ongoing supervision, maintenance, and enforcement measures for the park. And the town of St. Andrews is willing to collect the funds on behalf of the committee and provide tax receipts for funds collected. And council can budget 50% of the funds for the park as part of the 2023 budget process. And the motion before us is that council selects, and I'll put in here Harry Mallory Sports Field uh, Park location based on public consultation to establish an off-leash dog park in the town of St. Andrews. And I so move. And a seconder, please. Okay, Councillor Blanchard, and now we're open for discussion. So, of course, you could ask any questions from the uh, open house, but also uh, I'd really like to hear if anyone feels contrary on, on Mallory Sports Field, just so we could potentially look at an amendment if that's how somebody feels. So, Council, I'd uh, love to hear from you. What's your pleasure? Otherwise, I'll call the question. Deputy Mayor Akaji. Okay, um, uh, weighing the pros and cons uh, and looking at all Weighing the pros and cons and looking at all the letters that we got. And um, I thank Councillor Neal for going to that meeting. Uh, sorry, I missed it. But I think uh, I would feel better if the dog park was downtown, uh, downtown I guess I call it, um, uh, near the, the um, Langmaid Park, because I think it's just more convenient for seniors who have dogs and cats, and, or dogs, mm -hmm. not cats, because they're not going to walk their cats. Mm -hmm. I guess we're basing it on just dogs only. What are you going to do for the cats? Um, but I've heard from a lot of seniors, and they said that it's just easier for them to walk there, take their dog there, let them off leash. Um, I, this is not our first kick at the can for a dog park, and kudos to the people who are trying it again, because we seem to... It seems to get so far and then it knocks down, but um, I would prefer the Queen Street extension for a dog park just because it is closer um, and, uh, and the seniors would find it much easier with their pets to go down there. And that's just my opinion, but I prefer that than Mallory Park where there's a sports field and uh, if they're playing sports and the dog gets loose, then there's trouble. But um, that's just my theory. Uh, don't beat me up on the way home but um, uh, you know I think it's wonderful to have dogs um, and I think it's wonderful to have a park but I and I think um, there would be a, a better park a better place to have it but that's my opinion thank you, you your worship. De deputy mayor so we'll see if uh, you can of course make a motion to amend but uh, I'll see first uh, 
if you want to just get a, a feel of the land from everybody else first sure. before you do that to know if I'll carry uh, Councillor Heenan. Yes, Your Worship and Council. Um, <clears throat> I really don't have any preference to either one. The only thing that bothers me is the is the half difference in pricing, 120 versus 60,000. I find that they're going to have quite a job to fundraise $60,000. Uh, and then I find it hard that we could probably have to take 60000 out of a budget uh, next year. Uh, 30000 to me is a lot easier. Um, that's not saying that I'm throwing my support to the Queen Street extension. I'm just saying I think that the costs are out, uh, like out of the range for, for public fundraising uh, for $60,000. I find that's a lot of money. And we, uh, as, a, as a municipality, um, 30 is easier than 60, but that's just, my, that's just my opinion. I don't want that to sway the location, but I just worry that it's not going to be feasible to do the 120,000. Thank Perfect. you, Your Worship. Thank you for your comments. Um, I know that uh, Mr. Knopper did ask the fundraising committee, I believe, and they, their preferred location is the Mallory Sports Field. And they felt confident in their ability to raise sixty thousand dollars. Through your worship, that's correct. They did present to council originally that the preferred location that they had was the sports field, and that they're they are still committed to raising fifty thousand. And that was our sixty thousand that was submitted in the letters. Okay. And uh, did they say for themselves what the main determinant was? Was it the trail network that's there? I know there's one at kind of both ends of it, but was it the washrooms? Was there? Just, uh, just, through, to, just to clarify for your points, yeah, Councilor. Through you, Your Worship, I think it's a mix. I think uh, okay. you've got a larger space uh, optionable there. Uh, washrooms are already existing there as they're not down on the Queen Street area. Uh, there's lots of room for parking. Uh, and uh, to Deputy Mayor's Akaji's note, one of the actual comments that came from the open house was a lot of families do go and play soccer and, and baseball in that area. And a lot of families travel from all over and do bring their pets. And they thought it was also a an option to be able to bring the whole family to use the the fields and that so just as those were some of the comments that came through okay anyone else Councillor Blanchard yeah thanks your worship and actually I did speak with um, I wasn't able to attend the meeting but I did speak with a member of the um, of the dog park committee and uh, and uh, mr. Knopper was kind enough to sort of uh, uh, reveal I guess uh, some of the comments that they had made um, uh, I guess I am supportive of the Harry Mallory uh, 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 location though I, I would support the uh, the Queen Street one as well but just based on again what the the, the uh, dog uh, park committee had stated and um, again the location of the infrastructure parking washrooms things like that I do think it makes sense down there to have sort of things sort of uh, together like that um, I again one of the concerns was about the number of trees being cut down in that area so I, I am concerned about that I was uh, made aware that there was some discussion about possibly uh, shifting the actual location of, of the dog park around in the Harry Mallory area. It may not be exactly where we have it right now. It may be, we may be able to shift it over and maybe save some trees. I was happy to hear that they're also interested in having some trees within that. So perhaps some selective cutting would be, would be a way to avoid taking down a large swath. I'm, I'm hoping, like I said, once we start to dig into the details, some of those things might come out. And that, like I said, might even save some cost on the overall price of the, uh, of the project. So I, I'm supportive of, of Harry Mallory. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hurdle. Thank you, Worship. And just pursuant to that, I guess what, I, what I'd like to see is, is a, a cost update on if we take a very soft approach on removing trees from the park. I'm assuming that a considerable amount of that cost is from uh, tree removal. And if we look at, you know, very limited and maybe just underbrush clearing as opposed to actually taking down any large section of trees, what kind of cost savings we could have and if we could, we could take a look at that. Um, I have a sec second question, more of a, more of a I guess, um, a comment more than anything else. Uh, one of the things I'd like to see, and I know that we have a, a, a talking about a memorandum of un understanding here as well. I'd like to, if we can, encourage uh, on, like an ongoing committee activity. 
Um, not to say that I want to really be uh, have the town be arm's length from this, but I, I think that when we have a committee that is o ongoing and fundraising activities, there's a sense of pride and ownership as well as you have a number of members who feel like this park belongs to them and they stay active throughout um, the duration of having this dog park and actually some of those funds can go on to maintaining the park and, and, and helping to service the park as well. And so if we can in any way encourage that to, to be not just um, a relationship that helps create the park, but maintains the park into the future too. Thank you, Councilor Earl. I think, uh, staff, we had a conversation just about, uh, you know, leaving trees up, but also having it where it's open enough where if a dog had a droppings, you'd see it actually do the droppings, or there was a confrontation between two animals, they, they would understand what was going on. So um, I, I, I think there's a balance there, and uh, I, I think staff's trying to, to reach that as well. Would that be a safe assumption if it was at that location? about the original location too is that it's a little bit wetter so we've, we've got a you know you're gonna have to go with whatever trees you cut down you are gonna have to grub out stumps and stuff so that was a big cost besides cutting the trees was kind of preparing th the ground the property so it, it's gonna be a bigger you know I think it's a great idea to look at it see how we could shift it and stuff to move it then that'll change the cost okay. you know dramatically <clears throat> the only other thing your worship I'd like to just throw at you just as part of the discussion is uh, during the winter, they wanted it to be a 12-month-a-year park, which I think most of them always are. But if you can envision Harry Mallory, it's quite a swing up there. And so in discussions with the operations manager today, he says, you know, for smaller storms, so under 10 centimeters during the normal run, somebody can take a swing up there and plow it out. But for anything over 10 centimeters, it might be three or four days because that clogs up the downtown. They need all the equipment to remove. So just so people understand that, it, you know, there might be times of inaccessibility. Mm -hmm. And even during the winter, as you know, <clears throat> excuse me, there's no sidewalks or anything on along cemetery and we are going to be building a trail there soon, but that's not going to, the plan isn't to plow it right now, to be perfectly honest, that may come in the future. And so during the winter, that won't be a very good walk. So once the snow falls, people will have to drive up there, you know, in the most cases, just because of the narrow roadways and stuff for safety purposes, or that'd be the recommendation. So, you know, there's a little bit of a challenge there. I'm not saying it's, uh, not, you can't overcome it, but just to be aware that once the winter hits, that's going to be a little bit of a tougher a place for the users to be able to get access to. Thank you, Mr. Spear. Anyone else? Uh, Councillor Neal will to round it out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Your Worship. Um, yeah, to be honest, I think you guys covered pretty much everything there, but I was just going to say again, I don't really have a strong feeling for one or the other. Um, I definitely see the pros and cons to both of them. Uh, I do like the sort of additional larger size of the Harry Mallory one. Uh, and again, being at the meeting the other night, and talking to some of the tree or the uh, dog park committee members, um, they seem to be very open again to leaving some of those selective trees. Um, shade was a big, a big pro for that area. Um, I do share the concerns. It was something I was going to raise myself uh, about what happens in the winter. Uh, again, obviously paving that. Or sorry, I can see that. <laughs> That's basically where I thought we were going to end up going. Because again, when you're plowing that dirt road, dirt parking lot, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but it is very difficult on some of the equipment and... Well, and the, and the operations manager said the same thing. That field was never expected to be open during the winter, so there right. would have to be a different dressing of gravel just to be able to plow. The washrooms would have to be closed probably late October because it's only a shallow line. It's not buried six feet. It's basically much more than, not much more than a garden hose buried less than 12 inches. Right, there'd be no the heat there, right? Pardon? There'd be no heat. No heat or anything, and so there'd be significant investment, like he says, forty to fifty thousand dollars, to rerun a water line and winterize the whole building. If that was council's wish, may not be phase one of, of the project, but just so everyone's aware. Having said that, there's absolutely no facilities any time of the year at the other location. But just so we know that even at the Harry Mallory, it's you're only going to get probably eight or ten months, well, not even that, of use of the washroom facilities over there, for the time being. Okay, so, and then the only other comment I'd have would be, again, with regards to the Queen Street run, um, we did talk about it briefly at the end of that meeting, but um, the diagram that we were provided, again, it doesn't necessarily have to be a complete rectangle. Um, I'm sure there's ways where we can separate it so that there's a bit more of a buffer from the homes, if that was the direction that we went, uh, and possibly utilize a bit more of the space towards the Queen Street, the Queen Street extension, sorry. Um, again, just a comment, again, that doesn't have to be that perfect rectangle. 
Thank you, Councillor Neal. Well, I had an opportunity to speak. Um, unless anyone has anything new, I, I think probably we're wondering right now if it's the Queen Street extension or Mallory Sports Field. I don't know if you wanted to uh, make an amendment to see if you have enough votes to change that or if you'd like me to go ahead with the question. I'll, I guess I'll look over to Councillor Heenan and Deputy Mayor Akaji if you'd like to amend it. I understand why uh, Harry Mallory is, is uh, the preferred choice and that uh, they're dog owners, so they should know what they want. I'm I'm a cat person, so <laughs> I don't care what the dogs want. But <laughs> yeah. you can put it either place, and uh, you know I'm just glad to see this finally coming mm -hmm. forward because we've had it so many times, and Perfect. those guys deserve a place to free range roam. They're animals. Perfect. Well, with that being said, then I will call the question. If everyone's comfortable, all in favor of this motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, that's everybody. So the location has been selected as the Mallory Sports Field. Uh, so uh, we'll see how we make out with the fundraising. And again, I, I we'll have a conversation during budget time, assuming again that the municipality is invited to that process as a council. But um, uh, you know, there's opportunities within tour. This is something tourists can also enjoy. So we have a tourism accommodation levied too to help out with potentially some of those funds. So more to come uh, and some more consultation. It says based on public consultation. So we'll, we'll go from there. Uh, but I think they'll look at the plan and probably bring it back to council for a little bit more of a, almost a site plan. At this time, we're going to switch to Councillor Heenan, who is usually the star with the longest role of these council meetings. Uh, we're going to start off. This one isn't a motion, so I can kick it off. It's a discussion around PED 2208-12, which is amendments to MP 20-06 to municipal plan MP 20-02 and Z22-02 to the zoning bylaw Z22-01, which is Compass Housing Inc. as most of us know it. Uh, there is a report on staff which gives you a summary on page 75 as well as it uh, takes a little bit of consideration into feedback and then uh, staff made a, a bit of a, a recommendation after the they you know highlighted the planning advisory committee. So the staff recommendation would be um, recommended to see the site plan before we go to second and third reading. I think that's something that we'd all agreed that we'd like to see. Um, but maybe Mr. Knopper, we had a conversation here, Mr. Spear, we had a conversation. If you want to highlight maybe an extra step that we want to do to make sure um, that the public is as aware of this as possible. Um, I would say that uh, council's right now owning this process, um, but in the same sense, um, we certainly want to hear uh, feedback from the public, but we're all committed to finding an affordable housing option in this community. Um, so Mr. Knopper, maybe with that, I'll, I'll hand it over to you or Mr. Spear, whichever prefers. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, so in discussions, uh, as you, you've gone through first reading, you've hosted a public hearing of objections and it's gone to PAC. You have that information that's been v provided to you in this report. Um, one of the, I, th I think, uh, staff, we've had a discussion about this as, as a good option, uh, is once you've had uh, your site uh, review of from the developer is that you do call another public hearing of objections and that we do another polling out to the public and then that will give another opportunity with the site plan in place with the visuals of the buildings that are addressing the concerns that have been submitted and then you can hear the public again through that process so that would give you two public hearings of objection through that which is a lot of feedback from the public so uh, and I would suggest that's done before second and third reading so uh, it is anticipated at this point that we're looking at a site plan sometime into September that would be brought forward to council and then we would proceed to do another public hearing of objections after that. Council, love to have your, your thoughts on that. Personally, I welcome any opportunity to get more feedback. This isn't something that we're just pushing through or we're definitely listening, but it's something that we are going to accomplish as a council, whether it be there or anywhere. But right now, um, a lot of feedback that we've received is that is a suitable location for such a project. But with that being said, let's make sure that uh, some of the neighbors that said they didn't have an opportunity at the previous hearing objections has yet another opportunity to have a hearing of objections and they'll actually have more details because they'll be able to see the actual site plan. So does anyone feel contrary to that? Myself, I welcome as much public engagement as we can in this process. Uh, anyone? No, so Mr. Knobber, I think that's the next step. So site plan, then we'll call for uh, additional hearing of objections. Uh, and then from there we can uh, discuss uh, potentially going to second and, and then after that maybe third reading. So um, is that all you had for that one? I feel. 
uh, through your worship that was it the the purpose of this was to bring forward all of the public hearing of objections information as well as the letters submitted so council is quite aware now of where we are at with the public and their concerns perfect thank you for that mr uh, mr knopper and of course staff for leading the process um the next one is uh, a motion so i will pass it over to you councillor heenan at this time thank you worship and council <clears throat> PED 210707. Pazamaquati Lodge requests for extension on Town of St. Andrews land at Bar Road and Champlain Avenue. At the special council meeting of August the 9th, 2021, council provided to Pazamaquati Lodge Incorporated first right of refusal on 12 acres of land at the corner of the Bar Road and Champlain Avenue for the proposed development of the new lodge facility. Pazamaquati Lodge has been working with the province throughout the last year on trying to come to an agreement for the new lodge. They are currently working on a Class D estimate and architectural design of the building. These documents will provide the financial data necessary for the province to continue discussions on the replacement project. These documents will not be completed and submitted to the province until fall of 2022. Pazmaquati Lodge Incorporated is seeking an extension of the first right of refusal on the land at the corner of Bar Road and Champlain Avenue until November the 30th, 2022. Please see attached letters for background information from Pazmaquati Lodge Incorporated on the processes with the province and request for extension from the town. The motion, Your Worship, is as follows. That, council of, that the Council of the Town of St. Andrews provide an extension until November 30th, 2022 for the first right of refusal on a conditional purchase and sale agreement with Pazmaquati Lodge Incorporated, PLI, for a 12-acre portion of town land having the PID of 01325471. This agreement will be subject to the following terms and conditions. One, that the town and the PLI enter into a development agreement for the construction of a new 60-bed nursing home complex on said land. That the closing that the closing takes place within 30 days after signing the development agreement. Three, that the agreement of sale will expire on November 30th, 2022, if the closing has not taken place by then. Four, that discussion on supporting the concept of in-ground infrastructure for one year with future discussion based on cost estimates from engineers as of November the 30th, 2022. I, your worship, so move this. Thank you. Can I have a seconder for that motion? We've got Deputy Mayor Akaji. We'll open this up for discussion. Seeing none, so I will call the question. All in favor of this motion, please signify by saying aye. aye. And that's everybody, so that has been carried. Next one, uh, Councillor Heenan. Your Worship and Council, this is PED 220713, bylaw number 22 04 being the building bylaw for the town of St. Andrews, second reading. With the recent changes to the Building Code Administration Act, the town of St. Andrews is required under the province of New Brunswick to adopt a new version of the building bylaw. Provided with this report is a new version of bylaw number 22 04. Council still needs to complete three readings of this bylaw to pass. This bylaw will repeal the existing building bylaw 19-03. Changes to the bylaw include bullet one, enhanced definitions, bullet two, more focused purpose, Bullet three, modifications to exemptions of accessory buildings. Bullet four, obligations of con uh, contractors. Uh, bullet five, building permit, posting requirement, and notices for inspection. And final bullet, renovation or suspension or permits. First reading occurred on July the 18th, 2022. A draft copy has been posted on the town website for the public to view. It is recommended council move to second reading. Staff will put a notice out for the third reading to be done by title and bring to the first regular council meeting in September. And the action your worship is that council grants leave for the second reading to the bylaw number 22-04 being the building bylaw for the town of St. Andrews. I so move it, your worship. Thank you, Councillor Heenan, seconder. Councillor Blanchard, uh, we'll open this up for discussion, even though it's kind of a mandatory thing. Seeing none, all in favor. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Councillor Hurdle. 
Thank you, Worship. Just one quick question. Maybe, Xander, you can answer this one. Um, I know that uh, if, if no work happens over a 90-day period, um, the permit is, is a, my understanding, revoked. Would someone need to begin at uh, point A to start the process again if, if building were to continue? Um, the way it's worked up until now is it's, it's at the discretion of the building inspector. Um, and uh, I think currently it's actually six months. Um, I just want to look here and see what the actual uh, timing is. It's conditions, I think. Um, anyways, I think it would still be at the discretion of the building inspector. So we, one thing that's happening, yeah, it's within six months of permit approval. Um, so if the inspector really feels like it needs to go back to square one and there needs to be a new application, then uh, they would they would ensure that happens. But if it's, you know, we've seen a lot recently with supply chain interruptions, like heat pumps, for example, people are waiting to put them in and, and um, you know, they sitting at a container somewhere, not here. And uh, our building inspectors have been pretty understanding of people needing a little bit of extra time in those circumstances. Thank you very much. Anyone else? I'll call the question then. All in favor of going to second reading, please signify by saying aye. That's everybody. It's my turn to read. Bylaw number 22-04 uh, number being the building bylaw for the town of St. Andrews. I will read this by title. One is definitions. Two is purpose and scope. Three is exemptions. Four is notice of commencing construction. Five is posting on the premises. Six is obligations of constructor. Seven is stages of construction. Eight is notice of readiness for inspection. Nine is retention of documents. Ten is request for information. Eleven is application for permits. Twelve is fees. Thirteen is refusal to issue permit. Fourteen is suspension or revocation of permit. Uh, Fifteen is terms and conditions. Fifteen is repeal. Or sorry. 15 is terms or conditions, 16 is repeal. This was read the first time the 18th day of July of 2022, read the second uh, day of August 2022, and we'll revisit this in September Council. Uh, at this point, uh, we are through our motions for this evening, so we're heading to new business, which there's nothing, which brings us to question period. Any questions uh, on anything that was in the agenda this evening? Seeing none, any questions from the public online or through email, Mr. Knopper? So, Your Worship, we don't have anybody in attendance online, and okay. I've received no emails. Perfect. Thank you very much. So, one last call in the room. Seeing none. So, at this point, we're going to go into Councillor and Deputy Mayor's comments. So, I skipped this last month. I was excited. But uh, any member of Council? Deputy Mayor Akaji. Yeah, I'm doing a lot of talking tonight, but um, first of all, Jesse Davis is in our, what do you call this, audience, and I'd like to congratulate her and her Dragon Boat team for winning in Nova Scotia in their, um, their category, uh, first place. So our little town of St. Andrews is noted in Nova Scotia. So congratulations to your Dragon Boaters. I'm very honored to... So I know how difficult dragon boating is, and it's wonderful that we have such great enthusiasts and that they've come back with a first place title. That's wonderful. And I also heard on the radio that Mrs. Flamer is getting an award yes. on November the 2nd. So congratulations to Mrs. Flamer, and uh, uh, thank you for all that you do, and we appreciate it, and looking forward to seeing the award on November the 2nd. And the last thing I've already talked about was uh, Indian Point. I still want it to be called Indian Point. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Any other member of council? Councillor Heenan. I was going to say this at the uh, July Council meeting. I just wanted to uh, mention uh, a big thank you to the to the town and the staff of the town for putting together a wonderful July um, first celebration. Uh, to the fire department for their diligent from working from 8, 5 a.m. until midnight. I just can't believe the dedication and the dedication of all our town staff and all our town folks and all the volunteers. So I just wanted to say a big round of applause and a big thank you. 
Thank you very much. Pardon me, Mayor. It's Caroline, not Jesse. I got so excited when you gave me the opportunity to talk. I said the wrong name, so I'm going to get fired now. I noticed, but I wasn't going to point it out on camera. Oh, sure. Yeah. You guys would point any of my mistakes out. Any other member of council? Caroline. No, nope, we're all good. Well, Sorry, thanks. Your Worship, just can I add to one point to you Councillor Heenan? certainly can. So um, as part of the Celebrate Canada, when we submit our grant funding and our finalized r report, we were actually randomly selected this year as part of the review process, and we got full kudos from the federal government on Canada Day. Specifically, and I'll mention this, CHCO TV got mentioned for their great video of the parade and the correspondence, so they were actually very impressed with that being tied in, so congratulations, CHCO. Thank you. Well rounded out, Mr. Knopper. I don't think there's any other comments. Uh, I'm good. I, uh, I was going to mention uh, the Order of New Brunswick for Mrs. Flavor, but thank you, Deputy Mayor, for pointing that out. Um, so at this point, uh, I'm going to look at 7.15 p.m. that Council move into closed session per the Local Governance Act, Section 681C, information that could cause financial loss or gain to a person or the local government or could jeopardize negotiations leading to an agreement or contract. Could I have a mover to go into closed session, please? I've got two, so I've got Councillor Heenan moving, seconded by Councillor Hurdle. All in favor of going to closed section, session, please signify by saying aye. aye. That's everybody, so we'll give a few moments for everything to shut down. Thank you very much for Recording everyone for attending. Recording stopped.